Logan, the third and final Wolverine movie featuring Hugh Jackman is here and it's filled with Easter eggs and references that you might have missed. There are several references to the other X-Men movies, like when Xavier mentions what we saw in the first X-Men movie where Logan began as a cage fighter and wound up battling Sabretooth on top of the Statue of Liberty. We also see his military dog tags that he was given in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Origins is also where we learn that his real name is James Howlett, which he goes by once more for his limo service. And there's a samurai sword displayed on Logan's wall, a callback to the Wolverine movie set in Japan. The comic book Old Man Logan has been cited as a big inspiration, although a direct adaption was impossible because Fox doesn't have the rights to use the Hulk, Red Skull, or any of the other Avengers elements that belong to Marvel Studios. Still, Logan is a hyper-violent neo-western featuring an aged Wolverine who goes on a road trip in a world where the X-Men are gone and the villains reign unopposed, all in an effort to save his loved ones. One big change from the comic comes when a news reporter recalls that it was one of Xavier's telepathic seizures that killed seven X-Men, whereas in the comic it was Wolverine who killed the X-Men after Mysterio tricked him into thinking they were villains. Laura is referred to as X-23, which was her original codename when she was first introduced in the X-Men Evolution animated TV show as a rogue genetic clone of Wolverine. She then joined the comics and eventually went on to become the all-new Wolverine after Logan was killed. The cyborgs who are hunting Laura in the movie are the Reavers. In the comics, the group started out as a team of thieves, and it went on to become very close to what we see in the movie, deadly, mutant-hating cyborgs led by Donald Pierce. Pierce has had numerous affiliations in the comics, the Reavers, but also the Hellfire Club and the Purifiers, but he's always hell-bent on killing Wolverine. He even created a cyborg copy of Wolverine named Albert, not unlike the genetic copy X-24 in the movie. Some might be wondering why the longtime X-Men villain Mr. Sinister wasn't in Logan after the Stinger scene from X-Men Apocalypse. In the scene, a vial of Wolverine's blood is placed in a case marked Essex Court, hinting at Sinister's human alias Nathaniel Essex. In the director's commentary for Apocalypse, Brian Singer and Simon Kinberg even confirmed that the tease was indeed for Sinister. But Logan director James Mangold decided that a costume villain like Sinister wouldn't work in the more grounded movie he was making, so they went with Xander Rice instead who is essentially a carbon copy of his comics version. But don't worry, Kinberg has said they still have plans for Sinister. You may have noticed that the mutant Caliban is quite different from how he appeared in Apocalypse. He's now played by actor Stephen Merchant, has a British accent, and doesn't refer to himself in the third person. If there's anything worth knowing about mutants, Caliban knows it. According to Mangold, the Apocalypse and Logan movie teams both cast the character independently in their movies without communicating to each other. So it's all just one big coincidence because they both needed a character with the power to track other mutants. The mutant kids use some familiar powers that probably came from the genetic material of well-known mutants like Iceman and Pyro. A file shows the DNA of one child is from Christopher Bradley, a mutant with electric powers who goes by Bolt or Maverick. The child with the ability to control the ground with seismic waves was named Richter, a longtime character in the comics who has been a part of X-Factor, X-Force, and the New Mutants. There is a New Mutants movie in the works, but don't expect to see Richter because it's set back when the X-Men are young and alive. Finally, your head might have spun when you saw actual X-Men comics in this X-Men movie. The pages were drawn by Marvel Comics veteran Joe Quesada, while artist Dan Pinozian did the covers and colors, inks, and letters. But getting Quesada to draw those pages took a little convincing from Hugh Jackman himself. Those are all the coolest things we found in Logan. Let us know anything we missed in the comments, and for all your X-Men needs, stay tuned to IGN.